Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of Tech Views Nope. And today I'm going to show you how to add titles and floating things to keep track of items within a video within After Effects. Now, hopefully within the first part of this, you see a nine second video, which is what we're making in this particular one. So uh, keep that one in mind. Um, we're going to simply drag and drop the video we want to deal with into the project and down here. And what I want you to do is go to tracker. And by the way, this is um, 2015 version. Uh, your, if it's too old, it won't even have this ability. But go to tracker, go to track camera, and let it do its thing. And I w wouldn't really click anything else. Like down here, it's completely fine to do whatever but I wouldn't really work on anything else because I've had it a few times where when it's done, it will not do what it's supposed to do. So in that case, you would just hit reset and that will restart the stuff and, and you can get the points back up. But to see how far off it is, it's up here next to the analyze and cancel and that will tell you a lot of that. Now, one thing I want to mention is in this, at this point, you need to know what exactly you want to show. So with me, I want the titles and I want a shadow. And that's very important because if you can get those two things out of the way right now, then you're much, much better off in, um, in the long run. So uh, with that, um, and again, if you if you mess up, you can redo it, but you can see that this nine or 10 second video, it, how long it's taken. Um, and you'll come to this solve, solving camera and it, give it a second or two, and it'll show you the points. What you need to do at this point is to go down to video and see if things are right. So with mine, I'm panning, and um, it's it's a review video, and I want the model numbers to show in front of each box. And I I, I like this particular shot because I got a trick to show you with the cables in the background. But as far as this goes, if um, say the camera is static and it's just a recording a um, moving car or whatever then you can still do the same thing it'll put points on the car frame by frame or whatever and then you can track that uh, some people use this method to actually so say for example if i wanted to uh, block out something what i would do is click the general area given it allows me and then what i would do is create a solid and you can see it does that. I'm gonna leave that there so I can get read and read this, the rest of this going. So what you need to do is move your mouse around within this area, and you're looking for the bullseye. The bullseye shows you, okay, is this flat or not? So like right here, I think it's pretty much matched on with the four. So I want to right click and go to create text, and then create a shadow catcher and lights it will only create one light but it'll create multiple shadow catchers as it goes down and um then we need to go let me go all the way down here so we'll do the same thing so for example right here th this is why the bullseye is very important and you can lock it on a particular spot but it's best to do something like that so right here we're doing another Create text and create shadow catcher. And then we need to take a look at this. I think this is about as close as I can get. Create text and create shadow catcher. So with that, we got uh, three text, th three shadow catchers, and one light, and also one solid, which on show you in a bit what to do with that um but basically let's uh click down here 
And as you see here, if you run into this and you need to go back in, you got to do a reset to get the points up. Um, that's one of those. But um, as far as that goes, um, in fact, so if I messed up, I can press that and there we go. But uh, it will work. I can do that. But um, a as you can see here, the tax, the solid and stuff is staying in position. All right, and um, as far as that goes again, going down, you can see the solid staying there. So if it was a car or something and you just want to do the license plate, you can you can do that and uh, mess around with all that. It, and that way you can block out the license plate from going around because it will keep track of that, uh, of the object. But uh, I obviously don't want it to block that out for obvious reasons. So with this, what we need to do with the text is I highly advise at this point going in and putting in the, um, the, the actual text. And to do that, you go into the text, text, source text, and you can do that, or you can click the text up there, or just simply double click, and there you go. Um, I, again, the reason why I advise you to put in the text and stuff is simply because this, um, the text size will obviously change massively because you might need more or less, and you can do tricks. So there we go, we got the model numbers there. And we don't want this to look gray out. So we don't want to uh, accept lights, turn accept lights off. Um, I, I'm gonna do that with all of them. So you just go to materials, accept lights, turn that off. And same thing with this, materials, accept lights turn that off suppose that now we want the thing to stand up so it, it it's fine as is if that's what you want it's great but I want it to stand up so what I'll do is go to whatever I want to edit then transform and we will play with the X oh, well that was a Y X so we'll stand up with that and the Z and play with that for a bit um, and it's worthwhile to note that this you can get some cool effects and notice um, if I click that off and just click down here you can see that it sticks around and if we do it right you can see the cables looks like it moves side to side and it's floating above it so anyways um i'm going to fix all these up as i want um one thing i want to mention before i pause the video is use your anchor points so like with this particular one i don't i obviously don't want it there so i'll use the anchor point to move it a bit and do something like that and there we go but uh, I'll, I'll be right back yeah, and I'll have those set up so as far as that goes um, next thing we need to do is adjust the light we're going to make that into a spot and if we zoom out we can see the given area and you just needed to play with this and put it in the right position uh, another thing is is the reason why we got the shadow stuff is so if they like if you can look at uh, this one right here it shows the shadow so if we actually turn a set shadows off you can see but that's the thing that you need to note um, and, and that now the way we can actually have shadows um, if you want the light to be diffused a little then go to the 
shadow darkness and tone that down a bit so right here you can see that and you can see the zeros look like they're floating there and looks like it's natural and this is also a part of the where the spotlight is because what happens is is the you need it to match all the other shadows if possible it might be too hard but if possible and I'll be right back with that so looking at this to help you out a little bit more is you can grab this thing and move it around to help you grab that if it if it helps but the one thing I want to mention is you may run into instances like this where you have one shadow cast affecting another just move that around and play with it a bit you may be able to get away with just using one so for example if I wanted to I can just use this one for everything um, if, I, if I see that this is good enough the uh, let's take away that one so this is good enough we can take a look and see it is it actually is and, I'm, and I might end up doing that so as you can see there we go and if this wouldn't work if you got multiple layers so say for example if I got like a hill or something like that then I'll have problems uh, for something like this let's move this up a little move it like that and uh, let's take this and move it over let's turn out or something because it looks like I don't know. I don't think there's much I can do. But we might need, like say for example, we wanted a shadow to go against a box. Then we'll need a separate layer, um, a, sh a separate shadow cast to act as the side of the box itself. Um, so there's another example of that. But uh, I don't know. I think that's fine. So, you know, one thing I want to mention is while you review this, notice the cable is making it look like it's a 3D effect. Because notice, like, say, for example, this D, the bomb RD, it looks like it's flat on the floor until you look at the cable, where the cable passes behind it and there's a different effect behind it. That's where you're going to get a 3D look on it. This is actually a problem way back when, when I think it was Howard Hughes wanted to make some airplane movie. And he found he actually needed clouds because of the, um, it, lo it all looked 2D. It looked like toy planes and crap like that. Same thing is here is, yeah, you can have the shadow and stuff like that. And that will help out a lot, in fact but the cables grass or something piercing through and then you can feather it so it looks like it's sitting in this stuff uh, obviously in this case you wouldn't want to do that but anyways um, as far as that goes if you got any questions or anything else then let me know and um, i'll try to answer as quickly as possible and please feel free to check out this review that's coming up but uh if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, and share, and I'll check you in the next video. Have a great day.